Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso. Uh, this is recording uh, with me, Darius Olenchauskas. Today is the 23rd of March 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's uh, morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. So yep, uh, I hope you all guys had a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, you stayed safe, stayed indoors and uh, didn't do much. So yep, uh, or at least I would say did much at home. So um, <clears throat> as always, guys, before we jump into the charts, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also, um, so just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our, J of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on a daily basis. Yep, so feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys. Um, now then, also just a quick uh, reminder of what's happening uh, in, in the world in regards to the coronavirus. Virus. Now, um, of course, the number continues to rise. Um, as we can see here, uh, the number, this one is, um, they have even removed uh, the Chinese figures here because this is just other locations. Um, and basically, yep, other locations are uh, expanding rapidly, especially Europe, um, Europe and the US. Um, so as we can see here, I mean, although the, inf the amount of infected in Italy is lower than in China, uh, still the amount of deaths I mean it's already surpassed way above the Chinese figure so um, of course oh, the overall figure continues to rise I mean which is not really good um, of course uh, I hope like I said you guys are all uh, taking care of yourselves staying healthy um, keeping your immune system on the high um, so I mean this and for now it seems that this might continue going like this so uh, yes guys be very careful as always um, and uh, yep stay safe now let's see what's happening with the markets now the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100 um, now looking at the um, I've well I've looked at this one uh, last week and basically um, I was telling you guys to keep close on eye on this little level on Friday I was talking about this five five thousand two hundred ninety five territory because what I was saying that if we get a nice daily close above this then well maybe there could be a possibility to see uh, uh, some higher levels uh, being met here maybe going for a larger correction to the upside because don't forget that we are overall still below this downside line taken from the high of the 24th of February and uh, in a way um, we could see this one traveling a little bit higher but getting a hold up near this downside line and then sliding again so um, you see, you have seen that the, basically it stayed well below this territory and uh, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is back below that uh, psychological 5000 territory and is basically hanging around uh, near these lows, near the lows of last week um, and the price is currently balancing around the 4910 zone, so roughly around there. Um, the cash index did make a new low, um, so basically drifted below the low of, of last week, and uh, uh, but still remained above this 4,868 territory, 69 zone. So um, this level, just to, let me remind you again, uh, that 4,869 uh, zone is roughly around uh, here, around, which is the lowest point of October uh, 2011. So in a way, if the slide continues, if the if the index decides to move below this 
all this below all this zone here below this 4898 zone again then well I mean or in other words you can round it up towards the 4900 zone if it starts dropping below this territory then well we will start aiming for that 4869 which is re really not far but then we will aim for that lowest point of 2011 which is around the 4791 zone so keep your eyes on this one of course if that gets broken then well further declines are possible and um, and the levels that we will start looking at here will be the ones we saw in the uh, during the crisis here. Um, so, yep, one of the levels to keep an eye on could be could be around the 4,487, um, or even actually a little bit higher here. Uh, this is just not very convenient right now, guys. Uh, there we go. Um, let me probably zoom in here a little bit. We're trying to capture. I'm trying to capture this. Uh, this little high here, there we go. So 4,520, 21 zone, roughly around there. That's that could be our next potential area of res of support. Um, but again, like I said, we need to see a break below the 4,900 level again, and then, yep, we will aim for uh, for further declines. Um, the WTI oil. Now, the, uh, I've looked at this one as well uh, last week, and basically what I was telling you guys, especially on Friday, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this little 26.08 level, which is the lowest point of 2016. Um, so, in a way, it did try to push above it, but what I was saying that if it stays below this and if it closes the weekly, uh, the weekly candle below this territory, then yep, there is there is a potential for further declines. Um, we do have some lower levels here and let me just jump into a monthly chart so of course we will aim for the low of last week initially which is around the around, not far from that psychological 20 mark uh, just around the 20.08 uh, level but below that uh, we do have the lowest point of 2001 which is around the um, uh, 17, uh, 17 12, 17 point 15 zone. So approximately around there. Uh, that's our going to be our next target. But again, uh, first, <clears throat> first guys, you we we need to see how this is going to play out. You can see that the commodity did try to push uh, uh, lower today already. Um, in a way, we could see maybe a bit of a correction here. But if if it struggles to overcome that 26.08 level again, then well, another round of selling could be possible. If by any chance this decides to travel higher and uh, starts climbing uh, above this little territory somewhere around here, around the 30.17 uh, 15 zone, this is where it could become a little bit more interesting for the buyers, and we could see this one uh, climbing uh, to the upside for a larger correction. Uh, because don't forget that we're still uh, below this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of January. So in a way for now, uh, in a way it could push higher, but if it struggles to make its way above the uh, 26.08 level, then yep, another round of selling could be possible. Um, Ripple, um, I have looked at this one last week as well, and this is exactly uh, what I was talking about last week. So basically, uh, we were expecting a bit of a correction here. We did get our correction. We uh, managed to travel uh, closer to this downside line taken from the high of the 15th of February. And uh, But as you can see, it, it the crypto got a hold up near this uh, lowest point of December 2019 and then started uh, it got a resistance here and then it started drifting to the downside it it tested the zero point, well actually it's uh, it's not really testing yet but it's on its way it seems that it's on its way towards this one point uh, sorry 0 0.12 90 level which as you can see acted as a fantastic area of support previously um, and but if that gets broken then well I mean, we could see further declines here, guys. Um, this level here, the 0 0.1290, and let me just quickly jump into a monthly chart. Uh, this 0 0.1290 is basically the uh, the lowest point here that I've got on this chart, um, or the lowest point of 2017. But we did get an overshoot of that territory last week, and as you can see, uh, it did tr drift a little bit further south and tested the 0 0.11 territory. So uh, that's going to be our, again, our main target. Um, initially, we will be aiming for the 0 0.1290 level again. We'll see how it performs around here. If it gets a hold up, 
um, we'll be very careful because we may see a rebound here and maybe even a push a break of this downside line but if this 0 0.1290 level breaks then well the next target for us is the 0 .9, uh, 0 0.11 territory so be very careful for now for now as long as this downside line remains intact we will still continue targeting the downside um, but of course we'll be very careful at the same time so in terms of the upside uh, to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we would like to see a push above the 0 0.1990 level first and then aim for uh, for higher areas so keep your eyes on this one uh, DXY so another index but this time it's a dollar index and uh, looking at this picture after a fantastic rally last week uh, the um, the, pay, uh, the the index uh, managed to reach an area. Uh, basically, it hit the 103 zone, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nope, just fell shy of just a, a tick uh, from hitting that uh, hitting that uh, psychological 103 level and. Uh, it drifted down south um, on the 20th and uh, basically uh, this morning we're seeing uh, uh, it did have an attempt to overcome this 103 barrier but failed to do so and failed below the 102.26 zone and let me just show you where that level is the 102.26 is basically the highest point of uh, March 2017 um, it fell below that um, we did have a nice good level here uh, let me just quickly try to capture this one there we go uh, so the area around 103.82 that's basically the highest point of uh, 2017 the index failed to reach that and now you can see it's drifting a little bit lower don't get me wrong after such a steep uh, uprise it, it it is quite healthy for this index to go for a little bit of a correction here we do have some interesting obstacles on the way lower um, but in this situation probably what we can do is draw a uh, Fibonacci retracement here and see where the possibilities lie um, and basically the 23.6 percent retracement is around that a nice beautiful number of 101 uh, roughly around there and that's going to be our first main target uh, for now, we're going to be start going for that uh, extra correction, um, which could, like I said, lead towards that 101 zone. So for now, uh, we'll be very careful around here. Again, uh, we're not going to drag this one below this because, in a way, if this 101 territory holds, we could see a nice rebound and, um, well, a push back to the upside um, of course if it starts falling lower below this then this little territory will be somewhat of a neutral one for us but if it starts falling back below the um, below the 99.91 level which is around here and also almost coincides with the 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci then uh, yes we will aim for lower levels we'll, we'll aim for at least the 200 day EMA here so it's shown as the black line um, but again, for now, uh, as long as it stays above this 23.6% uh, retracement on Fibonacci and uh, straight stays above the 101 zone, then, yep, we will uh, consider this as a temporary correction and then another leg of buying. Um, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait this one out and wait for a push above the 103 territory and then aim for higher levels. Um, AUDUSD. Now then, um, here of uh, the pair managed to stay below the 0 0.6009 level. I spoke about this level last week when I was covering AUDUSD, and that's basically. Let me just probably jump into a monthly chart. Um, that's basically the lowest point of 2008 um, the pair remained below this now the big question here is because we are uh, right now in the kind of the last um, the last week of March um, this is going well actually, actually uh, the full last full last week of March it will be quite interesting to see how this all this is gonna end the monthly the month here because um, this level here still still is on our radars because if the uh, if the rate closes the month below this 0 0.6009 uh, level, which is the lowest point of uh, 20, uh, 2008, then uh, yes, I mean further declines could be possible. But if if by any chance the pair 
stays above the zero gets manages to get back above the 0 0.6009 level well this is where it could become a little bit more interesting for the buyers because we could see uh this pair uh drifting to the upside and uh, potentially, of course, we could be hitting some levels, interesting levels on, on, on the upside, Doom. but let's not forget that we're still below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 1st of January. So in a way, still, even if it travels higher, this could be seen just as a part of a larger correction. Uh, for now, um, again, given that the DXY seems to be a little bit on the downside, um, probably could be on the downside in the coming days, a few, a couple of coming days. So maybe we could see a bit of a correction here a bit of recovery um, to the upside and in a way as for now if let's say the the pair struggles to overcome the 0 0.6009 level then yep another round of selling could be possible so this could come in line with the idea of the DXY um, Again, guys, for now, be very careful, be very cautious. Uh, you can also keep an eye on this little level, the current low, or should I say today's low, the current low of today, which is around the 0 0.57 mark, roughly around there, a drop below this, could yep lead towards further declines we could start aiming for that lowest point of last week near the 0 0.5509 level so keep your eyes on that one uh usd jpy uh this is also coming in line with the whole dxy idea and we're seeing a nice uh recovery recover should i say correction here um after the pair hit the uh, the level here, the 111.50 zone, it started drifting lower. I've talked about this uh, this last week and uh, I mentioned that we, in a way we could see a bit of correction here. So for now we're seeing exactly that. Um, the, but the only thing is that let's not forget that we're still trading below this, uh, oh, sorry, below above this upside uh, support line. Let me just get rid of this line. Above this upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of March and in a way we could see this one drift a little bit lower maybe testing this little area here uh, around the 200 uh, day EMA maybe even the 108.58 zone here which previously acted as a good area of, of resistance now you could take the role of support um, but if it starts drifting below this breaks this upside line and b breaks below this 108.58 zone now then yes we will start aiming for some lower levels again for now guys uh, be very careful, uh, be very cautious, and uh, yes, as I said, we will aim for lower levels if we get a break of this upside line and a, and a drop below the 108.58 zone. Um, for now, be very careful, be very cautious. Like I said, still, as long as it stays above this upside line, we are still more bullish than bearish. Uh, but again, for now, at the, at, from the very, very short term perspective, there is a bit of a, a chance for this one to drift uh, further, further south. Uh, GBP NZD. So, um, very nice, interesting chart. I've looked at this one last week, and basically, I was telling you guys uh, to keep an eye on this upside support line taken from the low of the 30th of July. And as you can see, the uh, uh, the pair continues to balance above this upside line. Um, it's a bit of a tentative one, nevertheless, but still kind of is playing out nicely. So we saw a few uh, false breakouts here, and this is what I was telling you guys, that we need to see a nice good daily close below this 1.0, uh, or, or should I say, uh, below this uh, psychological two territory. Uh, but we never got that. We only did get these a few of these overshoots. Um, and you can see that the pair kind of reversed sharply and now is drifting, trying to drift higher. Um, we'll take a bit of a conservative approach here and wait for a push above the 2.0764 zone. So roughly around here, that's the high of the 10th of March. Uh, then for us, the next, if we do see something like, like, like that, then the next level for us is around the 2.0, uh, 2.10 2 territory, roughly around here. That's the high of uh, last week. Uh, basically so um, then yep that's going to be our next target if we get a break above this uh, hurdle here let me just quickly highlight that for our future reference uh, not this one but this one right here so if we do get a push above this 2.0764 then yep we will aim for higher levels 
where our next main target will be the high of, of last week. Um, of course, don't get me wrong, this is a very nice attractive level as well, the 2.18, uh, which is the uh, the high here, the highest point of March, and well, I mean, in general, it's one of the highest levels uh, reached uh, lately. So um, you can see that on the monthly chart here, we can see that last time we were at these levels were uh, was in 2016, sorry, so 2016. 16 so not far uh like say for for example from the high of 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 may 2016 so and by the way that level looking at this monthly chart coincides with the 200 ema here on the monthly chart so uh yep guys for now um yes we are more bullish than bearish from the short term perspective but uh we'll we'll probably uh wait for a break above the 2.0764 level first and then aim for for the upside for the downside um well it's a very tricky one still the same idea remains of the um the idea of uh, seeing a close below the uh, psychological two territory but um, all this zone here I mean I understand that you wouldn't you wouldn't want to miss out on any opportunities here but the way you could look at it is maybe if we um, get a drop below the 2.0540 zone which is the high here the high of 18th of March then maybe we could go for uh, a larger correction to the uh, to the downside towards this upside support line so yep keep your eyes on this one uh, GBP USD here um, so also going for a small correction here and now last week on Friday the pair stayed below this territory I talked about a lot about this territory that's this is the uh, the low of, of, of 2016 so this post brexit vote um, and also near the low of uh, 2019 so basically the pair remained although it, it did test this 1.1950 which is the low of um, uh, which is around the lows of, of the, the, the December sorry 2016 and 2019 the uh, the pair still closed below this below even below this 1.1880 zone so um, and uh, is now drifting uh, to the downside now Oh, sorry, drifting uh, currently is correcting to the upside, which is not, but in general, it drifted to the downside on on Friday, still, although it closed in the positive territory, but uh, this is not really looking good still for the um, for the GBP USD. Um, again, looking at this steep uh, drop, we are considering maybe a bit of a correction here, uh, again, towards this, uh, this highlighted territory, but if it fails to overcome this territory again, then, well, another round of selling could be possible possible guys so that's why um, still not all is good here for the for the British pound um, in the previous pair GBP and ZD it's mainly the weakness of the uh, commodity linked currencies the, like the NZD um, that's why it was driving GBP and ZD to the upside in this situation the dollar is still on the stronger side um, although like I said we are uh, considering a bit of a correction here GB for in GBP USD to the upside uh, because the DXY is is showing some uh, signals of a potential small correction so that's why this could come in line this idea of an upside here a little short upside on GBP USD could be possible if we do get a nice good daily close above the 1.1950 zone then yes we will aim for some higher levels uh, a, few, a few of the levels to consider here for example the uh, the 1.2195 zone which is the lowest point of October to 2019 and then we'll, of course we'll take it from there um, and finally Euro USD so um, here uh, this pair is correcting uh, to the upside a little bit or, or I would say already did a correction as you can see it did try to overcome this uh, 1.0777 level I talked about uh, last week and uh, basically all this highlighted area continues to hold um, let me just jump into a four hour chart probably that'll be easier so this area here continues to hold as you can see we are still below this downside line as well taken from the high of the 9th of March and uh, for now all this kind of is looking quite uh, bearish however at the moment as you can see the 
pair is kind of moving sideways. So we're currently in a little range here, roughly between the 1.0650 and the 1.0777. Um, so we need to see a breakthrough one of these levels before we could consider um, a further move, uh, a further directional move. So in a way, basically, long story short, if we get a uh, a break of this level here, the 1.0650 uh, zone, and to be honest, what we need here is not only a break, but also at least a four hour candle close below this territory. And then yes, further declines could be possible. Uh, and then we'll aim for some lower levels. In terms of the upside, uh, we need to see a nice good four hour candle close uh, above the 1.0777. But of course, also ideally, we would prefer maybe also a push above the 1.08 level. So, but just of course, we'll start considering higher levels if we get a, a, a nice good four hour candle close at least uh, above the 1.0777. Um, in terms of lower levels on the downside here, I mean, we would need to then jump into a monthly chart. And uh, here, basically, if we see a drop below this 1.0650, uh, well, we can st we will start considering low levels here that we saw in 2017, like for example the uh, the 1.0 uh, three is 1.0340 mark. Uh, this is the lowest point of uh, 2017. Um, and uh, then, yep, of course, we'll take it from there. Don't get me wrong, there are some levels here, for example, um, like the lowest point of March 2017, which is around the uh, 1.0495 level, could be a nice potential target as well. Uh, but yes, overall, uh, we are going to be very bearish if we get another drop and another close below this uh, 1.0650 zone. So let me just put this one back here. There we go. Um, so yep, keep your eyes on this little range here right now, guys. Um, it might drag here maybe for a few days. Uh, so yep, and wait for that confirmation break. So if by any chance, let's say this continues to drag sideways here and gets closer to this downside line. Now, this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers. But um, again, for now, let's not over speculate on this too much. Let's see how this is going to move and keep your eyes on these two highlighted areas. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end. Um, if you want to join me uh, or if you want to catch my video later on, uh, my traders tea, uh, tea time, as always, uh, it's going to be around after uh, f after around uh, 14, 15 uh, GMT time. So yep, uh, keep, wait for like I said, wait for the, it to be uploaded after that period and after that time. And uh, yep, uh, like I said, I hope you will enjoy that one as well. So thank you very much for sticking around, guys, and thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate that, and uh, yep, I really appreciate your time. So um, and I'm really hoping to kind of like I said, I hope you will enjoy the uh, traders' tea time uh, later on today at 14:15 after 14:15 GMT time. Thank you very much, guys, and bye bye.